Let's go down to Rome's mandatory minicamp is mercifully finally upon us. And the, the burning questions, yeah, this, this sort of changed from yesterday as Justin Frank and Jefferson signing up his long-term extension, four years, $140 million, $110 million guaranteed, keeping J.J. in purple a long time. It's beautiful. But we talk about practice. But, I mean, so minicamp has a different feel than OTAs. Yeah, yes, it is in the same vein. Yes, the rules are similar. But it actually feels like, Football, football, as opposed to just, you know, practice. Talk about practice. But uh, here are 10. 10 uh, burning minicamp questions as we head into the three-day uh, workout stands of this week. Number one, will J.J. work with J.J.? So th that's the question. First-round pick, J.J. McCarthy. Uh, first, uh, So it's beautiful. Today is the first practice that McCarthy and Jefferson will have together. Glorious. Hopefully the first of many, 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 many 10 to 15 years. Uh, but, uh, of course, individual work. I mean, they'll, they'll work together. They'll rotate through his quarterbacks are thrown to receivers. But J.J.'s firmly been with, with the third team. And Jefferson, obviously, is going to be with the first team. So don't see a lot of crossover there. Uh, but one nice thing is, how does Darnold look with 18? All right, so Sam Darnold. Number three overall pick in 2018, and he had all the potential in the world. Uh, he was comped as the next Andrew Luck, but with the Jets, eh, with the Panthers, eh, uh, and then was back up with the Super Bowl uh, appearing, appearing San Francisco 49ers last year. But Jefferson, by far, by far is the most talented receiver that he's ever worked with. Hell, Edison is by far the most talented receiver he's ever worked with as a starter. All right, so, uh, but now... He's going to be on the field with Justin Jefferson, and I just want to see how this how this offense is going to look. And uh, will they ease J J.J. back in? Will they give him a full workload? Don't know. Uh, but also, I mean, Kevin O'Connell, I'm sure at um, the presser today, will we'll rave about having J.J.'s leadership back in. And that's what Jefferson does. Like, Jefferson is a humble, hardworking leader. He sets the standard, and uh, he just excels uh, in, in everything. And that's uh, something that is contagious uh, throughout the organization. And you, you talk about how a couple bad apples can be bad for the locker room. A couple of good apples can can definitely re, uh, definitely unite a, a locker room as well. People don't talk about the other side enough. Number three, second team wide receiver rep. So uh, in JJ's absence, there, there's been a, a power vacuum of sorts for a lot of the wide receiver one work. Brandon Powell, Jalen Naylor, uh, Frage and Trent Sherfield, uh, as well as Tristan Jackson have been working in there. But uh, it's going to be an interesting competition to see who is uh, the w wide receiver three, four, five behind Jefferson and Addison. Uh, I do think that Thayer Thomas, who's quickly developed a uh, nice chemistry with just uh, with uh, JJ McCarthy, uh, could have an inside track to at least Rooster Deshaun Jones, who Deshaun Jones from Maryland uh, got a lot of UDFA money, uh, so potentially he could be rising up as well. I think Sherfield does look good in spots. Jalen Naylor, of course, is the OTA champion, uh, as well as Brandon Powell. Uh, is really solid as a wide receiver 3-4. So, I mean, the competition is wide open, yes, pun intended, uh, behind J.J. and Addison. Number four, where does Dalton Reisner fit in? Come on up for the Reisner. So, R Reisner, th they've said that Blake Brandle is going to remain as first team left guard. And even at OTAs last week when Blake Brandle missed time with personal uh, for personal reasons, Dan Feeney was the one who stepped in. Now, that makes sense because... Reisner, even though he was with the team last year, he is coming off, uh, coming in cold off of the street. Uh, some of these other guys have been in the entire offseason and OTA program. Uh, but I, I I love it. I mean, there's actually going to be a legit competition at some of these guard spots. You know, Brandel, Reisner, Ed Ingram. Now, I, I don't expect any changes during mandatory minicamp or OTAs next week. Uh, I think that you'll have to get into the meat of training camp before those the, – this will be the guys that were like, well, we're, we're just experimenting with, with different combinations, trying to get our best five out there. That's exactly what Chris Cooper is going to say, because eventually you'll see you know, Reisner and Ingram or Reisner and Brandle or, uh, or Reisner and what's the other combination? Brandle and Ingram. Yeah, sure. Uh, but I, 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 again, it's beautiful that there's going to be a legitimate competition along that tier offensive line. It's actually really exciting. Uh, next up, number five. Uh, will Brandle or Ingram step up? And that's the other side of competition because it's not just about Dalton Reisner. And, and Reisner, the full details of his contract are, aren't out yet, but uh, it was reported that it was very heavily incentive-laden and uh, you know, bonus-driven. So it's incentivizing him to uh, come in and become the starter. But, but that should also fire up uh, the asses of Ed Ingram and Blake Brandle as well because, I mean, for Brandle, just like, hey, I just got a three-year contract. 
Uh, am I going to go back to the bench? No. And Ed Ingram's like, hey, I've been a two-year starter. I've been a second-round pick. Uh, I've been developing and growing and showing. Uh, am I going to go back to the bench? No. So, again, uh, the competition is going to bring out the best in everyone. Next up, number six, uh, and Va- Andrew Van Ginkle stole it with a foot. Now, reportedly, it's, it's not looking great. So, re- reportedly from Al- Alcalusi Athletic uh, that they're hoping that he could get back in time for training camp uh, and maybe into the season. So, mm. So he, he's a guy that could potentially start uh, training camp on the pup list, but he could come off at any time. Uh, but in his absence, Dallas Turner has been getting uh, tons of reps with the ones, uh, which is great for his development. And I, I think that he could hit the ground running. Uh, but AVG, a- uh, I mean, I, I was super fired up about his signing, his versatility, his history with Flores. He's going to be a really important part of the defense, but I have to wait a little bit. Number seven. What does the Flores defense uh, look like? So mandatory mini camp or ma- mini camp is just that. It is a mini training camp, and they've talked about how it is a full-on install at, at mini camp. All right, so at OTAs, uh, yeah, I mean you are drinking from a fire hose, and they try to uh, put everything in there. But mini camp is everything, is every every everything, and just seeing the you know the potential combinations, ju- just seeing uh, the versatility of some of these guys out there, just seeing how they're going to attack and. The, the whole thing about it is, too, is like, hey, Sam Darnold, hey, uh, J.J. McCarthy, hey, Nick Mullins. Uh, actually, Mullins and McCarthy should be switched. Mm. Uh, every single day, they're practicing against one of the most uh, co- complex and aggressive defenses in the National Football League in Brian Flores' unit, and that, that can only benefit them. <clears throat> is that cough and die? Is that you, Rona? Mm. Uh, next up, number eight. Starting cornerbacks. So what, what's been interesting is, so th- th- there's two standbys. So Shaq Griffin outside at left cornerback, uh, Byron Murphy Jr. in the slot, and it's been Makai Blackman, it's been Akale Evans rotating at that other spot. Now, I actually expect the rotation to continue all the way through minicamp, the last week of OTAs and into training camp. And it may even be a spot, too, where, I mean, it rotates on a game-by-game, matchup-by-matchup, drive-by-drive basis. And I don't know, like, I feel like corner is like anything. Uh, like It's good to get in a rhythm. It's good to get into the flow of the game. But, I mean, if you have a bunch of really talented dudes who are just champing at the bit for snaps, I mean, maybe keeping them hungry uh, could could make the most sense. But uh, as of right now, it's pretty clear that there's a, a big four with Shaq, Blackman, Murphy, and Evans and everyone else in the quarterback uh, competition. But, of course, I mean, Camp is a long way away. Uh, maybe Booth can get back in. Uh, maybe Kyrie Jackson, the rookie, can get in, uh, et cetera. Uh, next up, number nine. Actually, nine to ten are pretty similar. So rookie roles as well as which day three UDFA will rise. So with the rookies, I mean, M- McCarthy's quarterback three right now. Turner's working with the ones. Kyrie Jackson working with the twos and the threes. Uh, Rouse and Jurgens uh, have been great in terms of uh, offensive line depth. Uh, I think that they potentially could be a little something down the line. Will Rockhurd has been looking pretty good. I think that he's going to keep John Parker Roma at bay. Levi Drake Rodriguez has mainly been holding pads, but I mean that's what happens uh, at the uh, during, during practice when you're at the bottom of the roster. Uh, and also the UDFAs. So mandatory minicamp is about when Ivan Pace Jr. really started taking off and really solidifying uh, his role going forward. And, I mean, there's still a lot of really interesting UDFAs. You know, Deshaun Jones got the bag. Gabriel Murphy got after it, too. Uh, I still really like uh, I still really like Dallas Gant, Dwight McLaughlin, et cetera. So now, I mean, some, some of these guys can start making a name for themselves uh, heading into training camp camp uh and getting a a, a, a head out on things so superstar for football and super excited to see what this team is going to look like in the fall i think we're going to surprise a lot of the haters and the losers uh but yeah. uh anyways that's it that's tan tan uh mini camp questions for the minnesota vikings so let us know your thoughts and our thoughts in the comment section below subscribe for daily vikings takes want to support the work put a little something in the venmo but next time skull production value